shift gears just a little bit because we could go on uh, the entire can, yeah, hour uh, on this. And but still adjuvant. Um, I'm I'm fascinated and now routinely recommend to all my patients post adjuvant therapy uh, exercise. Um, the the data that says high levels of exercise post treatment actually prevent recurrence. So I in that stage two patient I said I could give you some chemotherapy or I could give you some Nikes. Uh, and, and <laughs> very often, very often they'll, they'll pick the Nikes. It's a fancy um, shoes then. But, you know, and so you've got 55, 60 year olds who said, I've always wanted to get in shape. Well, now's the time. And, and it's really interesting. But <laughs> related to that is this emerging, continued emerging data around aspirin. Mm -hmm. uh, Axel. Tell us what's, what all that's You know, <laughs> this has been around, this idea of that aspirin as a COX-2 inhibitor plus whatever can uh, influence can, the risk of recurrence has been around for quite some time. It actually led me to use aspirin uh, routinely every day. And we can talk about the dose, <laughs> whether it's free, free, whatever. Uh, I don't know the dose. But you know, the, the, uh, from retrospective analysis or kind of prospectively identified hypothesis analysis of uh, previously conducted studies, I mean, the, the evidence is overwhelmingly positive that aspirin COX-2 inhibitor can actually really influence the risk of recurrence in, in colon cancer, um, can influence the number of polyps even in FAP, for instance, in the familial adenomatosis polyposis. So there's a lot of actually preclinical data, translational data, it makes a lot of sense and has been studied in, in, in large cohort studies. Now, in one of the most fascinating data that came out recently in New England Journal of Medicine last year was actually, you know, the, the analysis of the effect of aspirin on tumor recurrence in colon cancer and tying it to PR3 kinase mutation or PIK3CA mutations, which I think was fascinating. The hazard ratio, if we had used this as an intervention trial, was mind-bogglingly positive. So I could actually, it is in, it, as if aspirin was a targeted agent for this patient population with PIK3CA mutations. And I think we've only scratched the surface right now. We should remind people there is an adjuvant trial ongoing right now, the 8702 trial, conjunct with CLGB and SWOG, and I know Heinz is involved in that. Um, where actually we have we talked about the duration question of adjuvant therapy, but it's actually also embedded, embedding a COX-2 question, you know, celecoxib over two years, uh, three years, three years, mm -hmm. yes, in as adjuvant therapy as, uh, in a randomized comparison. And I do believe that with the tissue sampling, whatever, we'll tease out whether these PIK3CA mutated tumors will be the ones who benefit from this intervention. Heinz, the day this New England Journal article yes. came out, I got three emails from patients, should you test my tumor for, for this mutation? Because yeah. already, they're already on aspirin, this sort of thing. That's one question. The second, what's this maybe going to teach us about the biology of colon cancer? KRAS teaches us one thing. Is this going to teach us another? I think so. I think um, we will look in much more in the um, me mechanistic pathways for why tumors come back, uh, how important the molecular makeup is for tumor um, recurrence. And I think I do PH3 kinase testing routinely. Um, now, in the adjuvant, I have not, but since then, I do. Um, I think it will give us some insight. And I think if we would have not tested in this study, we would not have understood the differential effect. And I think what we have to learn in the future is that one drug like aspirin probably does not work for everyone. I think that we have drugs which work in some patient population, and we need just to have our efforts done to identify these. So if your patient's not pick C3A... Huh. You stop there. Ah, well. that's a very good question. Yeah. I'm not sure. I would sure. like to know that. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think you can then, you know, um, discuss that we don't know. But I think if you're with a mutation, you're much more comfortable because you, you have to make sure that they understand aspirin has also its downsides, you know, you, um, uh, co coagulation pathways and renal and stomach ulcer. So I think you need to go through it. I think the data are extremely exciting and promising. Um, the dose is another question, but I, I think I test for it in the future. We will know what the benefit is in yeah. wild type. Yeah. But these pathways, of course, then trigger the excitement, what else do we have to look for leading to recurrence? And we have the efforts from Europe, from the PEDAC study showing, you know, the markers for stage three recurrence are different than for stage two. Here you have suddenly SMAT4, you have P53, and P3 kinase is another player in these uh, signal transduction pathways, which we get to know very well in order to make treatment decisions in the future.